It's Davos week, the great reset. You will own nothing and you will be happy. Why do we keep hearing this phrase? What is going on at this Davos? Why are these billionaires getting together? And after making one video about the Great Reset, we've decided to dive a little bit deeper into what you think and further evidence and your legitimate concerns. It's time to look at the big picture and work collectively. That's the message from day one of Business Bonanza, the Davos Agenda. This year's World Economic Forum has moved online because COVID. Davos this year cannot be the usual networking fest it's built its reputation on. Davos regulars like Angela Merkel and Bill Gates will check in from around the world, as well as Vladimir Putin, Prime Ministers of India, Japan, Spain, Greece, Israel, Singapore, Presidents of France, Korea, Argentina, South Africa, Secretary General of the United Nations, Director General of the World Health Organization, Governor of the Bank of England, Secretary General of Interpol. The agenda has been shaped by the pandemic and organised around the Great Reset. So I suppose when you talk about it being a conspiracy, it ain't a conspiracy if it's candidly spoken about and uh, explicitly stated. That's not a conspiracy. That's a sort of an agenda. Like if you believe, as many people do, in the values of detachment, of letting go of possessions, then I feel like the best way to espouse and spread these values is through embodying them and demonstrating them. Nothing to worry about there, that's just a drone delivering a package to your door. That drone couldn't be used for any... Sorry, what? Yeah, you can keep that delivery actually, I'll just wait for the van. And I've misjudged the tone as well. You'll eat much less meat. Stop telling me what to do. I'm already vegan. What do you want me to do? Pull meat out of me. An occasional treat, not a staple. The problem is with this video is it's the exact mood of like a dystopian thing that you'd be sort of forced to sit and watch with matchsticks holding your eyes open in a great big terrifying cinema. And then it just goes into bad things. Also, a billion people will be displaced by climate change. Finally! No, no, that's the bad bit. This is the first opportunity of 2021 for business leaders to come together to talk about jobs, the green economy, and how to shape future sustainable growth. Markham White is one of the people that brought to our attention the phrase, you will own nothing and you will be happy. My question is, if I don't own anything, then who does? Who controls the resources? Well, it seems like the most obvious answer is the very people who practically own everything now, i.e. members of the World Economic Forum. No conspiracy, just factual and well-stated intentions. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned. Well, Markham, I share your concerns and I share your diagnosis. Captain Muggs, congratulations on the name. You've got to be a few sandwiches short of a picnic if you think the billionaire's boy club are out to do you any favours. Give them an inch and they'll take a mile. That's the kind of language I like. I agree with you, mate. Mantis Age, what do Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Monsanto, Walmart and Starbucks have in common? United Nations World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Sustainable Development. Did you see David Attenborough's documentary there on Netflix where he says, if something can't be done forever, then it's by definition unsustainable, that we have to change many, many of our practices. And most of those practices are related in one way or another to profit. Stop developing. That's what needs to happen. Never mind sustaining it. And also sustain, sustaining something. We want to improve things, don't we? I'm glad that so many of you were engaged by the Great Reset video. And I'm really happy to have this opportunity to dive deeper into a subject that, let's face it, it's going to go on and on as globalization continues and the sense that we are separated from power and the way that we are evolved to live becomes more and more distant and remote. We don't live as tribes. We're not in control of our own resources. The idea that we will own nothing and we will be happy sounds like a terrifying, not Orwellian, but sort of Huxleyan idea that we will be so mad into compliance, drugged by a sort of a magical substance in our water, into dumb compliance with the objectives of the powerful while we live as kind of human drones. Lee Alexander says, Russell asks questions these days, but rarely voices opinion and beliefs on subjects, perched firmly on the fence out of fear. What I'm actually trying to do, Lee Alexander, is create a space where wherever you find yourself, deep, deep, deep into a particular belief system of any variety that you know that this is a place where you can talk and be heard. In my podcast, Under the Skin, I've had uh, 
guests that are from what you would call the right, guests from what you would call the left, guests without their views in a sort of a spiritual sense, uh, atheistic and materialistic views, scientists, spiritual folk, because I'm interested in truth and I acknowledge my own inability or any individual's inability to have a total understanding of one truth because there probably is not one such thing as the truth. There are many, many perspectives. But if we're going to live in a kind of globalised culture such as we do, we're going to have to become accustomed to one another's beliefs and find new ways of communicating and accommodating a diverse range of opinions. And it's a two-way street, the idea that we don't judge one another and we allow people to be who they are and how they are, whether on whatever basis of identification that is. Now, would you believe it, but Naomi Klein is able to better articulate this than I am, perhaps through years of experience, diligence and study. Here's some interesting things that Naomi Klein says that you might dig. In 2003, WF founder Klaus Schwab introduced the tradition of each January summit having a big theme. The Great Reset is the latest edition of this gilded tradition. Like the WF's earlier big themes, the Great Reset is not a serious effort to actually solve the crisis it describes. On the contrary, it is an attempt to create a plausible impression that the huge winners in this system are on the verge of voluntarily setting aside greed to get serious about solving the raging crises that are radically destabilized our world. At this point, when we talk about the WEF and the Great Reset, it becomes in a sense a kind of nitpicking to decide what the WEF's power are and what the overall agenda of the powerful people and institutions in this world actually is. Naomi Klein herself says, while questioning the actual power of the WEF, all kinds of dangerous ideas are lurking under the Great Reset's wide brim. From a reckless push to more automation in the midst of a jobless crisis, the steady move to normalise mass surveillance, biometric tracking tools and the very real problem of Bill Gates' singular power over global health policy. Now, Naomi Klein has done the hard work so that we don't have to. These, Naomi Klein says, are legitimate concerns. I think what Naomi Klein queries is the conflation of the Great Reset, in particular with cynicism towards climate change. Because when it comes to climate change, who benefits from the idea that human activity does not impact climate change? Let's just consider that question, whatever your personal beliefs are on the Great Reset and the way that global power and globalism affects ordinary people, where I bet you and me see things exactly eye to eye. Well, who wouldn't want regulation introduced around energy companies? Who wouldn't want to acknowledge that fossil fuels are damaging the environment? Who doesn't want the way that we power our lives to alter people that benefit from these existing institutions and corporations. Take, for example, the broadcasters that are cynical about climate change. Just one example at random, Sky News, and uh, you know that's a Rupert Murdoch-owned channel. Rupert Murdoch demonstrably has interests in energy companies. He's by no means alone in that. That's ordinary. In fact, when people talk about the nature of power, these kind of connections between broadcasters and what are commonly known now as mainstream media and big business are totally overlapping, completely immersive. Who would suffer if we were to say you can no longer use fossil fuel? Who would? You know, it's not you or I. We would ultimately use renewable or sustainable energy. I don't bloody well care where it's coming from. I would prefer it wasn't destroying the planet that we live on. For oil companies, the more climate action can be conflated with an organisation known for its traffic jams of private jets and its bond villain founder, the easier it will be to resist any climate plan at all. This messaging is gaining traction, not because people are suckers, but because they are mad, angry, and they have every right to be. Lockdown policies have demanded months of individual sacrifice for the collective good without providing the most basic collective protections to keep families from slipping into starvation and homelessness or to keep small businesses afloat. Meanwhile, trillions have been spent to backstop markets and bail out multinationals and pandemic profiteering is rampant. Is it any wonder that so many find it entirely plausible that the same elites who expect them to swallow all the coronavirus related sacrifices while they party in the Hamptons and on private islands would also be willing to exaggerate the risks of the disease to get them to accept more bitter green medicine for the common good? So I suppose what Klein is saying is 
that we should be extremely cautious around suggesting that the pandemic is not real. I know that a lot of you have got strong views on that. Her point is that we oughtn't conflate ideas around climate change with this group and its obviously economic-led and power-driven intentions. What's required to actually combat spiralling poverty, joblessness, climate breakdown and informational degeneration, regulate the companies that have created these crises, tax them, break them up and in some cases put them under public control. This is an aspect of solution-based thinking that there is a strong imperative to mask, negate, ignore. I think Naomi Klein's contribution to this conversation is telling. Naomi Klein is a well-schooled, lifelong activist whose book No Logo changed the direction of this conversation around the power of global corporations forever. And I think her involvement in this conversation can perhaps reclaim from the territories where it currently dwells, perhaps uh, reframing the way that climate change is seen and ought to be included in the uh, morass around globalism and its consequences, not maligned and seen as a sort of a conspiratorial component. I've really enjoyed hearing your views and comments and opinions and indeed receiving your insights and your education on this matter. It's changed my opinion. So whether you want us to look deeper in a Klaus Schwab's book or to learn more about Bill Gates's unique position of power, let's keep this conversation going. The Great Reset, whether or not the WF is literally a powerful organisation or merely a front, for the way that the powerful manage globalization, to me, seems like a rich and lively topic. And we're in a unique time. And these kind of conversations, this kind of discourse is precisely what we should be having. Let's keep it going. Comment below, like, subscribe and share. Thank you.